case at 12. The night beat starts right now. And you'll have the night beat a local teacher arrested, accused of having an improper relationship with a student. Now police are trying to figure out if more victims may be out there. This is 35 year old Thomas Rivera. Today he was arrested at Lanier High School. He is employed with San Antonio ISD. Investigators say he previously worked at Steele High School within the Shirt Cibolo Universal City ISD. And just yesterday, a student at Steele High School told administrators Rivera sent her an inappropriate text message. Anyone who believes they may be a victim of this man should call Cibolo Police at the number on your screen 210-659-1999. New tonight, she served our country. Now she needs our help. A Marine Corps veterans truck stolen with her beloved dog inside. She's desperate to get her dog back. It's been more than 24 hours since her dog and truck disappeared. They were last seen near Pleasanton Road and Military Drive. The night team's Alyssa Cole joins us from there tonight. Alyssa, this veteran says this all happened within just a matter of minutes. Yes, Karen Lucchese says she was just running into the H-E-B across the street and within a few minutes when she came back outside, her dog and her truck on which she relies was gone. It was a quick run inside and out of this H-E-B store in South San Antonio late Thursday afternoon. Karen Lucchese, a Marine Corps veteran and 28-year firefighter retiree, had her dog with her at the time. So I left the uh the car on for the AC to be running. The window was a little cracked like that. When she came out, her red Ford F-150 2012 pickup truck was gone. Her dog Hoochie and everything else she left inside. My wallet and my phone. I don't even have a picture ID now. I'm, I'm lost. Lucchese has had Hoochie for nearly 10 years. He's a senior dog. Lucchese says it's hard for him to see and hear most times. She describes him as a companion, helping her navigate life with PTSD. I've suffered uh, from depression for a long time, and he's gotten me through some very difficult moments in my life. And he's, he's uh, even though he's not a person, he's still my best friend. Lucchese wants everything back, but she's most worried about Hoochie. Please give me my... my my dog back in my vehicle, my wallet, and my phone. Thank you. Now, HEB personnel say surveillance cameras showed a man and a woman approaching the vehicle. The man got inside of the vehicle and drove off, and the woman, she walked off. Now, police do not have exact access to that video right now, and they're not releasing it at the moment, but there is a reward for Hoochie's return and, of course, the return of the truck. If you have any details and you would like to return that truck anonymously, call the San Antonio Police Auto Theft Unit at 210-207-7345. Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. You could hear the emotion in that veteran's voice. Let's hope she gets her car and her dog back. Thank you, Alyssa. Right now, investigators are following a new lead after a woman's body found near Northeast Methodist Pavilion. Officers in Live Oak want to speak to the man in this picture that's on your screen. Investigators say he is 52 year old Keith Hammond. He's considered a person of interest in this case. The woman next to him in the picture is 50 year old Laura Braseno. Her body found Monday near Judson and Tupperwine Roads. If you know where Hammond is, Call Live Oak Police at 210-653-0033. Now to the fallout a San Antonio City Councilman is facing after a heated confrontation. District 1 Councilman Mario Bravo now stripped of his committee assignments. That's according to a memo from Mayor Ron Nuremberg. Last night, we told you about sources confirming Bravo confronted District 7 Councilwoman Anna Sandoval ahead of the budget vote last week, leaving her in tears. They previously dated and Bravo admitted to saying things he regretted. Bravo's suspension essentially means he can still vote on issues brought before the full council, but since he won't be on any committees, he'll be less likely to help form policy. The city attorney's office says the city has also commenced, quote, an independent investigation. A spokeswoman for Bravo declined to respond to today's developments and Sandoval's office said it had no comment pending further investigation. 
The case had investigates team obtaining documents related to the school shooting investigation out of Uvalde. An email now shows DPS officers were referred to the agency's office of the inspector general earlier than previously thought. We actually requested information two months ago at the start of this month. It was widely reported that DPS officers were under investigation and tonight we know that started at least as far back as July. That's when DPS director Jeff Williams questioned the response of some DPS officers and recommended the OIG review their actions. As many as seven DPS officers are now being investigated for possible disciplinary action. More than 300 law enforcement personnel responded to Robb Elementary School May 24th. 91 of those responding work for DPS. Now to the battle over crime, noise, trash, and yes, parking. It's an issue that's built tensions between businesses and neighbors along the St. Mary Strip, and now a new parking plan is being proposed. And as you might expect, not everybody likes it. The night team's Patty Santos shows us why businesses aren't happy and what solutions are being looked into. How to coexist? It's been a touchy topic for Tobin Hill residents and business owners for years. Usually all the neighbors really don't have a problem with people parking here, but it's the noise afterwards. You know, the fights, the, you know, they're out here drinking, throwing their cans everywhere. After years of meetings and a short parking study last spring, the city is flirting with the idea of a residential pilot parking program. This is going to be new for San Antonio. This is different from anything we've done before. Um, there's demand for it, not just in District 1, but in other areas as well. The full details will be released in a meeting Saturday. The plan would go before council for a vote in a couple of months. But Councilman Mario Bravo says roughly 19 bars would be impacted with limited nights residential parking. Residents would also be limited to a handful of permits per household. Some people want it, some people don't. Some people are concerned. Change is very difficult for many, whether it's positive or negative. The interim president for the Tobin Hill Association says there's mixed feelings about limiting residential parking. And he sympathizes with businesses that have already been hurt by the pandemic closures and the delayed street construction. The businesses are having a really, really tough time. Bar owners declined to talk on camera but said the timing hurts their already sluggish business. City solution ideas include a shuttle service. One of the ideas that's been thrown out there is maybe working out a plan with some of the businesses that are open during the day but closed at night to be able to use their parking lots. Bravo says once construction is done next August, there will be additional parking spots and 45 rideshare pickup and drop off locations. I know that one of the, the business owners on the North St. Mary Strip has a huge piece of property uh, where they want to convert it to a 200 car parking lot. That would be great. The first meeting is tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 12 here at St. Sophia's Greek Orthodox Church. The next meeting is October 8th, and Bravo tells us District 8 and District 10 are also considering similar pilot programs. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. She's still ahead. She's a veteran, a Latina, and she's made history. We were able to catch up with her as she now calls Military City USA home. Her story as we recognize Hispanic Heritage Month. It's next right here on the Night Beat. A pioneer is being honored this Hispanic Heritage Month. Olga Custodio is the first Latina military pilot and the Hispanic Heritage Foundation is recognizing that work. Olga, who retired here in San Antonio, sat down with our Erica Hernandez to talk about her career and how she hopes to inspire future generations of women pilots. Born in San Juan, Puerto Rico, Olga Custodio knew early on about life in the military. Her father was in the Army. Served in the latter part of the World War II. Then he went back to uh, enlist again and um, went to the Korean War. After working at Puerto Rican International Airlines and graduating college, Olga wanted to serve just like her father. But at first, being a pilot wasn't a possibility. It wasn't the goal because it wasn't available. After being told she couldn't serve as an officer, Olga kept trying. And eventually, in 1980, she was accepted into officer training school and then pilot training. In 1981, she got her Air Force wings. To do something that women were just starting to be able to do 
they were given that opportunity and I was part of that pioneer group. Olga would become the first Latina military fighter pilot. She flew numerous types of military aircraft and became an instructor pilot. Olga would also become one of the first American Airlines Latina commercial pilots. I was not in this to be the first of anything, you know. When it happens organically, it's just meant to be. Olga has since retired here in San Antonio. A few months ago, she found out her more than 40 years in aviation would be honored by the Hispanic Heritage Foundation with the Hispanic Heritage STEM Award, an award she hopes will help further inspire future pilots. I have a mantra, motto, that I use. It's querer es poder, where there's a will, there's power. The power's within you. You can find that, tap it, and use it to, to excel and succeed. The Hispanic Heritage Awards will take place on September 30th. It will air on PBS. Other nominees this year include Daddy Yankee, Los Lobos, and Marvel Studios' Victoria Alonso. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. She's got an inspirational story, that's for sure. All right, let's check out live cam tonight. It's Friday. And I'm hoping we're past the record-threatening heat. Yeah, you know, fit, or I almost said 56, 96, the high temperature today. So that keeps us at 58, 100 degree days. And I think this was our last run at 100 for the year. All right, so I don't think we'll make it into first place. Settling for second is my prediction. Morning low temperatures, though, will be changing. If you're looking for a hint of fall in the air, by next week, the mornings will get down closer to 60 degrees with very low humidity. I mean, Tuesday morning, 68, but Wednesday morning, 63, Thursday morning, 60. Afternoons won't be as fall-like, but you will notice it in the mornings and the days ahead. So that's right around the corner. Temperatures outside right now still 70s and mostly 80s 82 del rio 85 officially in san antonio new braunfels 84 degrees converse right now at 82 tomorrow morning we'll start the day near 70 then this is the forecast by the afternoon 97 gonzalez 94 on the west side of town stinson on the south side 94 and about 93 officially at the airport looking ahead no big changes through the weekend or even monday by tuesday and wednesday we get back down closer to 90 so the mornings are going to take a bigger temperature hit opposed to the afternoons behind a weak cool front that hits us on Monday. Our pattern is shifting upper level high big blue H. It's slowly breaking down and moving out of town, but it's still in control of our weather and it's going to influence influence us through the weekend as well. Monday's when that weak cold front arrives and starts those changes, especially for the fall like mornings by the middle of next week. We now have tropical storm Ian. This is in the Caribbean headed to the west and likely turning north as roughly a cat two interacting with western Cuba and then potentially a category three major hurricane by Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, somewhere around Florida. You can see the cone of certainty here and that shows you anywhere within that the center of the hurricane could end up around here. 93 tomorrow, warm and humid, a few coastal showers, maybe making it to Lavaca County or DeWitt County, but for the most part dry and then still pretty sunny on Sunday. 94 the high temperature and you will notice the humidity through the weekend. It's going to be muggy all weekend long and even into Monday behind the cool front on Monday, though humidity drops off. I mean, we're talking very low humidity, a, an extended dry stretch with dew points in the 40s next Tuesday through Friday. That's something we haven't felt in a while. Thank you, Adam. All right, it is a tune up Friday for a lot of teams as they get ready for district play. Yeah, and a lot of traveling here because Steel was in Midland last week. Now they're hosting a team from Sugarland, Fort Bend Christian Academy. When we come back, the Knights make their day in this game tonight, and our big game coverage road trip takes us south of town. Coming up. Hi, we're your Steel Knights cheerleaders, and you're watching big game coverage on KSAT 12. Woo! Packed house at Lenox Stadium tonight to watch the Steel Knights put their number one ranking and undefeated record on the line tonight against Fort Bend Christian Academy from Sugarland. Steel up 7 0 when we arrive. Knights at the 50 yard line. They hand it to Jaden Bailey and look at him go to work. He starts up the middle, bounces to the outside, and he's running right at you. Leaps over defending and races in for the 14 0 score. The Steel defense putting points on the board. Alvin Williamson steps in front of the pass for the 22 yard pick six, 21 0 Steel. But the scoring isn't over. First and goal for Steel, and they turn to Bailey 
again turns in another touchdown. This time from four yards out, 28 to nothing. Steele at the half of the final from Linoff, 48 to seven Steele. It felt great. Um, I think that there's stuff that we need to prove on first and foremost, and we're going to go back uh, on Saturday and we're going to do film, look at what we need to do across the board to get ready for district play. All right, the Judson Rockets hosting Midland Legacy, the same team that took on Steele to overtime last weekend. Quarterback Elijah Favela hits DeMorian McGarity over the middle. He cuts it upfield, and he's off and running. But the Midland Legacy defense also has speed. McGarity gets chased down, but not before picking up 62 yards. Get down to the 22-yard line. A few plays later, Favela finds Nathan Nathaniel Stanley, and he races it in the corner of the end zone and gets there before being knocked down. The 10-yard score makes it 7-0. Let's see if that has gone final. Not yet. Still in the 453-34 just. And Reagan cheerleaders are some future cheerleaders rooting on the Rattlers. Reagan up 14 0 in the second, adding to that. Rattlers inside the red zone. Quarterback Caleb Capuccio fires it to Carnell Weatherspoon. Hot route to move Reagan to the 11 yard line. They cap off that drive right here with a three yard TD from Carson Green. To make it 21 0 Reagan. The final from Comalander, 34 7 Reagan. Here come the Roosevelt Rough Riders for the second half of their game against number six Johnson at Hero Stadium. Mid third quarter. Jaguars up 35 21, adding to that lead. Quarterback Ty Hawkins keeps it himself, heading toward the near sideline. Cuts back, breaks a tackle, bursts into the clear for a 45-yard touchdown. Johnson goes up 42-21. Now let's head to the big game coverage scoreboard for that final and more. 63-35, Johnson with a big win. Reagan holds off Marshall 34-7. Elsewhere, Steele with a big win. And also Midland Legacy losing to Judson, but that is in the fourth still, 53-34. The Taft Raiders went up against O'Connor tonight at Ferris Dam. Already lead 3 to nothing. Looking to add to that in the second quarter, running back T.J. Andrews takes a handoff, plows through the line, running over one defender, then sprints to the end zone. 30-yard score to make it 10-0. The Final from Ferris, 24 to 6 Taft. The Stevens Falcons up 27 0. When we arrive in the third quarter, Gustafson Stadium against the Jay Mustangs. So the Mustangs don't give up. Malachi Graham takes a handoff. He's able to get to the corner, cuts it up field. He's racing down the sideline. No one's going to catch him. He's gone 65 yards for the touchdown. They missed the extra point, 27 to 6. That has gone final now from Gus, 33 13. Stevens. Eagle pass wing. Coach is trying to drop something in that fourth quarter, down 28 to 7 Southwest in Dragon Stadium. The Wind Mavericks keep it up the fight here on the fourth down here. Abiel Cardona losses in the end zone for Fernando Vasquez. Makes the grab. Is able to get both feet down before going out of bounds. Wasn't enough. The Dragons take this one 28-13. Burbank Bulldogs visiting Alamo Heights to face the Mules tonight. First quarter, the Mules on the Bulldogs 27-yard line. Quarterback Conley McKenna drops back. Goes deep to Rhett Anderson. who makes a great grab over his shoulder for the touchdown. 7-0 Mules. Back to the big game coverage scoreboard for that final and more. Heights with a big shutout. 62 to nothing. Southwest over Eagle Pass win. 28-13. Elsewhere is Taft on top of O'Connor. 24-6. Six and Stevens on Jay, 33-13. Addison Bears mascot cheering up on the sideline because their Bears are up 17-6 in the second against Sam Houston. But the Hurricane Storm back in the, before the half. Two seconds left. Sam Houston with the reverse. Tristan White comes around the corner, lowers his shoulder, dives in for the score to cut that Edison lead down to four. 17-13, the final from SAISD, 26-24, Sam Houston. The Lanier Volks with the District 14-5A Division II shutdown with the McCullough Cowboys tonight. Harlandale Memorial Stadium. The Cowboys are up 7-3 in the third. Volks with the ball, fourth and seven. The McCullough 25 and they're going forward. It's Santiago Gallegos rolling out. Finds Marquise Dixon on the sideline. The 10-yard game, 4th and 10 for the 15. They go for it again. This time, Gallegos finds Damian Graciano for the touchdown. They miss the extra point, but they take a 9-7 lead. The final, McCollum wins it 14-9. At Edgewood Veterans Stadium, Memorial taking on floors. Though. Tigers up 28-19, the fourth quarter facing 3rd and 7 in the red zone. Keegan Lafferty rolls out. Finds Harris roars in the back of the end zone for the 9-yard TD. Extra point is good to make it 35-19 Tigers. Final from Edgewood Veterans 49-19 Floresville Young Men's Leadership Academy hosting foul furious tonight. The Lions up 10 to 6 in the four, going for more. Quarterback Aiden Delgado standing tall in the pocket finds a wide open Andrew Carasales who takes a big hit in the end zone but holds on to the ball for the 19-yard score to make it 17-7 YMLA. Back to the big game coverage scoreboard for the final in that game and it's 24 to 6 YMLA. Floresville over Memorial 49-19. Sam Houston edges out Edison 26-24. McCullum over Lanier 14 to 9. The Bernie Greyhounds now number one in 12. Top 12 sub 5A poll hosting Salado tonight. Where in the first quarter, the Greyhounds call for the wide receiver screen. Quarterback Jackson Bays is able to find Caleb Cloutier. He's able to get in the end zone for the first touchdown tonight. The final, Bernie, 41 to 7. Randolph Rohawks are ranked seventh in 12's top 12 sub 5A bowl, putting up their undefeated record on the line tonight against Marion. The Rohawks start on the ground. The handoff goes to Austin Young on the sweep. He's able to go outside, down the sideline. Looks like he's going to go all the way, but he gets chased down, brought down to the 15 a few plays later. It's a direct snap to Colton Howard, who follows the blockers in for the four yard score. 7 0 Randolph final from Rohawk, 27 13 Randolph. South Sand faculty joining the dance team out on the field. 
field for a little halftime entertainment. Bobcats clinging to a two-point lead in the fourth. The handoff goes to Joseph Salinas. He cuts to the outside, then darts back inside, finds a little daylight, is off to the races. 74 yards to the house, 34-25 Bobcats. Canyon Lake paying a visit to East Central tonight to find out if the hive is alive. Hornets up 3-0, but the Hawks strike back. Quarterback Hunter Anderson rolls out. He's a downfield for Elijah Johnson for the 15-yard gain. A little later, they hand it to Johnson. He powers his way in from 11 yards out. They go for two, but they don't convert. 6-3 Canyon Lake back to the big game coverage scoreboard to see if that game has gone final as well. It has. Canyon Lake with a victory over East Central, 20-10. It was South Sand over Laredo Martin, 34-25. Birdie, big final over Salado, 41-7. And Randolph over Marion, 27-13. We're just getting started. Up next, our big game coverage road trip, fan cam, and more highlights and more scores. But first, let's listen to the Southwest Dragons marching band. Our big game coverage road trip had Larry and photographer Adam Higgins headed south with stops in Charlotte, Jordan, and Poteet. But instead of a, what we say, a wardrobe malfunction, we had an equipment malfunction. So we'll do the audible. We'll pitch to Larry right now inside our newsroom. Hey, Larry. Yeah, that's right, Greg. Due to a technical issue, we had to leave Poteet to get back here to KSAT to edit our game video to make slot. Unfortunately, we still lost the video of the first two games, Sabinal at Charlotte and Kennedy at Jordan. You just got to love technology at times, and we do apologize, folks. So let's go right to game three between the Eagles and the Aggies. So our last stop saw the Pleasanton Eagles flying high at Poteet in a non-district game. Third quarter, Eagles up 21 to six and adding on. The handoff goes to number 28, Michael Castillo. He cuts to his right, then cuts to his left. Now two Aggies will try to stop him, but Castillo fights his way and his final stretch is key as the ball just breaks the plane. Touchdown Eagles, young man never gave up. Point after was good and the Eagles led 28 to six with 720 left in the third quarter. Let's go to the scoreboard now to see those games for you. Seven defeated Charlotte in that district opener for those two schools. Jordanton beat Kennedy 44 to 7 and Pleasanton is a winner tonight by a final of 28 to 13. So both Pleasanton and Poteet will enjoy a bye week before opening district on October the 7th. Pleasanton will host Rockport Fulton and Poteet will play at Lytle. And by the way, Greg, sorry I'm a little underdressed for the studio <laughs> party. Back to you. Understandable. Time now for Fan Cam. We are fans of us cover one of the big games in our big game coverage tonight. Here's our Andrew Seeley. Up. It's the Battle of the Panthers tonight. TMI hosting Austin Hyde Park. Home team Panthers trailing 21-0 in the second quarter, and they're looking to rally. Pass over the middle is deflected and intercepted by Quade Jackson. Hyde Park takes over at midfield, and they punch it in on the same drive. Gus May drops it off for Ian Riddick, and he powers his way into the end zone for the Panthers' fourth touchdown of the day. It's 28-0. That is the score at halftime as fan cam departs. TMI trailing Austin Hyde Park 28-0, but we didn't reach that mark without a surprise visit from the Sprinklers. From Howell Field, Andrew Seeley, KSAT 12 Sports. <laughs> Got to rework those timers on Friday night, don't you? Right, let's take a look at that final. 35-12, Austin Hyde Park over TMI. How about Southside Dining, Medina Valley, 33-21. Elsewhere is Southwest Legacy falling to Rate of Cigarro on the road, 27-22. Shout out for Lano over Cole, 59 to nothing. Elsewhere, Austin Regents, and got to get way out of the way here for you. 55 to nothing over San Antonio Christian. Is San Marcos leading right now? Eagle Pass in the fourth quarter, 31-25. Rock Springs with a big shutout over DeHannis, 12 to nothing. Divine over Uvalde, 42 to 14. Uh, Senton and Lavernia, look at that, went down to the wire. Lavernia pulls out the win, and it was Piper over Bastrop, 30 to 21. The final that one. Hondo tried to beat Ben. Bandera, Bandera hangs on for the win, and Pearsall over Lido 50 to 20. Sorry about the little equipment problems we had, so we couldn't bring you the highlights from Charlotte and um, also Pleasanton. Apparently, well, TM, apparently TMI, they had some equipment <laughs> malfunctions there, too. Yeah, exactly. By the way, it's Texas Military Institute, not Texas Military Irrigation. Yeah, very Just good. Just want to well, point well, that out. Yeah. <laughs> Glad you cleared that up for us. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. All right, little taste of fall next week. This weekend, still warm, humid. We'll be in the low to mid 90s. Same story on Monday, but by Tuesday, our morning temperatures start to fall off and we're looking at mornings closer to 60 by the middle of next week. Low humidity as well, most of next week. Love that. Thank you, Adam. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you on Monday.